Hello. This is Boxy2. Boxy2 is our new autonomous robot for industrial applications. What kind of applications? Well, first of all, all kind of scanning. So you install their uh, barcode, QR code, or cameras on the robot using their existing holes, and there are many on the top, on the side, so it means that it's very convenient. And then you send the robot using waypoints from our dashboard, and the robot drives repeatedly and accurately, with two centimeters accuracy, uh, over the area as large as you wish. So, for example, if you have a warehouse of 100 by 100 meters, okay, not a problem. You install many station beacons, and then you send the robot driving. Or it could be even more sophisticated scenario. For example, you install the 5G terminal on the robot, and 5G terminal is used for accurate 5G indoor coverage optimization. So it means that you tweak your network and you send the robot. The robot carries the 5G terminal and even can get the power from the robot. Let's discuss a bit about this later because the robot has a lot of power internally and is designed to power your own equipment. So their 5G terminal is uh, driving, or well, the robot is driving and carrying the 5G terminal. 5G terminal uh, performs the calls, uh, downloads the data, uploads the data, and you use this data. Then you tweak your network, and then you drive the robot again, and then you see whether there's any change. So, of course, in order to compare the first drive to the second drive, you need uh, repetition. It's very difficult to do manually, but with the robot, it's exactly what the robot is designed for. Um, but let's jump to uh, the differences between Boxy 1 and Boxy 2. Boxy 1 and Boxy 2 are very similar size-wise. So the robot is around 4.5, 5 kilos, depending on the battery configuration. So let's say under 5 kilos. Uh, but the biggest difference between Boxy 1 and Boxy 2 is automatic charging station. So the charging station uh, is using the same 5 amp uh, fast charger, which is capable to charge the robot uh, fully with the default 100 watt hour or 8 ampere hour battery uh, under two hours. So the same charger is connected to, uh, to the charger and the charger is automatic. So the robot comes to the charger, uh, the robot or the charger detects there is a charger and the charger puts their electricity on the pad. So when there is no robot, there is no electricity. So you can short circuit, not a problem. But only when the robot arrives, there are pins, and those pins uh, will start getting their current from the charger. So this is the biggest difference because before the robot was fully uh, autonomous, but now it's even more autonomous because basically it can drive forever until it breaks. Uh, because it can drive automatically, but then when their battery is low, it automatically goes to, to the charging station and charges. So uh, this is a robot. Of course, it's autonomous robot. So any autonomous robot, it must have sensors, actuators, and uh, the processing units. So let's talk about the sensors. Uh, of course, uh, the main sensor are the indoor positioning system, uh, which is using our uh, ultrasound plus radio based system. So it has two Omni microphones, and these Omni microphones, by the way, only top 25 centimeters are here. If you want to install a basket, for example, like one meter basket, okay, not a problem, because there is a one meter cable inside, so it means that you can remove this, unscrew these four screws, and put it on top. So it means that your basket will not produce their non line of sight. Uh, so, and the robot measures the location of, of each of their uh, Omni microphone with two centimeters accuracy by knowing location of two. It knows not only its own precise location, but also direction. Because in static, it's not possible to get the location without uh, having two Omni microphones. Uh, of course, Omni microphones and the indoor positioning system is one of the sensors, but one of many. Even so, most important, probably, uh, but one of many. What are other? No, first of all, uh, lidars. Lidars are important for obstacle uh, detection and avoidance. There are 12 lidars altogether. Lidars can sense up to uh, 4 meters. 
uh, but then it would be too sensitive to their external light, for example. So we set it to one meter, which is more than enough because the robot drives around 30, 50 centimeters, so half a meter uh, at maximum per second. So it means that it has like two seconds to stop, which is more than enough to stop. And the robot sends and uh, the lighter sends and they stop whatever 30, 50, 50 centimeters uh, before, uh, before the obstacle. It sends all around and also below. So there are sensors even below, so it means that it can sense their negative step. It will not fall from your stairs. Um, other sensors. Now, sonars. Combined with two Omni microphones, it's very, very powerful because very often you may face, or the robot may face the situation uh, when lidars are not uh, detecting, like light, or light, glass, for example. So, and also light, by the way, uh, lighters can be blinded with very, very powerful infrared. It's okay, we have secondary source of information. It's not as precise, of course, as lighters, but it's better than nothing. So, and the sensor fusion the, is the heart in the system. Um, then, of course, odometry. There is very precise odometer on the left wheel, on the right wheel, and it measures uh, their uh, drive when, for example, there is occlusion. And ladders are not seen because the distance is very large. So it can drive for a few meters using purely odometer and still won't be lost. And then, of course, it accumulates the error, and this error then cancelled by the ultrasound system. Once again, uh, sensor based uh, or sensor fusion based system. Of course, IMU. IMU is there, and IMU is used uh, for for everything. Again, for sensor fusion, because without IMU, the direction is not possible, or let's say precise direction is not possible, and many things are not possible. Um, I guess there are even more sensors. We can discuss about them just to make it a bit short. Another very important element is the camera. There's up-facing camera, and those lights are not for nothing, so you can switch, uh, uh, switch them on, and they would lit up their, uh, the ceiling. So it means that it's, it's possible that the robot would be driving using antodometry and ultrasound-based system and uh, optical positioning. For example, for QR codes, barcodes, and those uh, special codes that you pl place on the selling. So it is, uh, it is also possible. Uh, then about the actuators, uh, because the robot needs to perform something. The basic thing is, of course, driving. And that's basic, but the most important probably. So yes, it drives uh, autonomously and very accurately, two centimeters accuracy. And uh, these two centimeters accuracy is provided by the sensors, uh, but uh, also by the wheels, which are, you know, designed for all this kind of, you know, driving in industrial environment. For example, the surface here is not very uh, smooth, so it's pretty rough, so it's up to five millimeters or more, it can drive still successfully. So the floor must not be necessarily polished. Um, what are other actuators? No, well, since you can connect your own equipment, it's very important that uh, uh, you want to power your equipment. So it means that you can power this equipment from the external USB. So it's very easy, like regular USB, you just connect it and your external camera or external something will be powered. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, there's additional pins specifically designed to power your equipment, 12 volt, Two amps, five volt, two amps, and switch to the ground. Also two amps. Uh, but you want to communicate with the robot as well. So this is why there is a, a open API. So it means that through the API you can get their uh, plenty of data from the robot and even sent to the robot. What kind of data? Now, first of all, of course, location. But then, of course, uh, a lot of other pieces of information, like uh, power supply, uh, like uh, how many uh, meters it, 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 is dri it has driven, uh, what is the current speed, what is the current, current consumption, hundreds of uh, different uh, fields you can uh, get. Uh, but even more importantly, very often you want to command your own equipment, like switch on, switch off, focus, or do something. You can do this using our own system. So it's not very fast, a few kilobits or a few tens of kilobits per second, but you can use it. So it means that you can send 
from your system to your uh, payload some commands using our own radio. You don't need additional LoRa or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You can send using our radio and then through UART or SPI. Let's discuss about this. You can command your own equipment and vice versa. So it meant that your own equipment can send the data uh, from, uh, from the equipment. Like, I don't know, position of their of the arm or uh, that it took their measurement or it recognized the QR code and then sends the QR code to the system. How? Oh, OK, QR code is recognized. UART or virtual UART over USB, and then you send it through our radio and you collect uh, through the modem using virtual uh, UART over USB once again. So then multiple, multiple interfaces. Let me repeat. Uh, UART, virtual UART over USB, multiple USB ports, SPI, I2C. You, you get this uh, connectivity uh, using uh, audiometry board, which is the low level board, but also the high level board, which is uh, basically Linux computer. A Linux computer, uh, Raspberry. So, and Raspberry is powerful because you can run even your own uh, applications there. And uh, you can debug those applications using the HDMI and USB. So, you can co collect, uh, connect the mouse and the keyboard and debug it. Additionally, there is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So there is a special hole on this. So it means that you can send the data using Wi-Fi. Okay, for Wi-Fi, there is a cable. And for Bluetooth, there is a small hole. So it means that you can collect pretty fast data out of the system. We do not recommend to run your equipment uh, or your program on their computer, but you can. Normally, you install your uh, favorite boards right on the top. Uh, and uh, it's very convenient because you see there are many holes over there, but some of these holes are even designed specifically for Arduino, Raspberry, and Jetson Nano. So it means that those holes are basically ready to use for your favorite boards, and you can run your application on your boards. You can supply your boards from, uh, from, the, from the robot, and then you do all the things you wanted to do. Uh, by default, now it's about battery. By default, a robot contains 100 watt hour batteries. So it's one uh, or 12 volts and eight amp hours. It's basically because we ship it using air and uh, there's limitation of how much uh, battery it can be in order to be allowed to the plane. Uh, but you can purchase additional batteries. So by default, they're eight amp hours, but you can install up to 40 amp hours, so five times more. Eight hours sufficient to drive several hours. It's very difficult to give a precise number because it depends on, on the load, on the speed, on the surface, on the mode of driving, uh, but it's several hours with uh, full capacity only inside full capacity, it would be five times more. And I estimated uh, drive time would be 48 hours, 48 hours. And let me repeat, so uh, their default can be charged in two hours and drive around eight hours, 10 hours. And then with the full, it would be able to drive 48 hours. And of course, you typically don't need so much for self-driving, so you power your external equipment from these huge batteries. Some people want to have it even more. Is it possible? Sure. There is a layer of batteries, so you install additional batteries and then you just connect this battery directly to this uh, 12 volts port. So it means that the robot will carry the battery or even uninterruptible un power supply, and this power supply would be uh, supplying your own equipment. So, um, what else about the robot? Uh, the robot is designed uh, for uh, industrial applications, uh, but there are many other applications what people are trying to use the robot. Now, for example, I already mentioned the basket. So originally it was for bringing 
uh, samples of plastic. So there's a huge plant and uh, people produce uh, plastic in one part of the plant and uh, the laboratory which needs to test and uh, uh, analyze the plastic every 30 minutes is on another side. So now people are driving every 30 minutes. Okay, what's the point? You install their uh, basket, again, it's screw the basket, put their uh, this bottle or uh, these samples and send the robot. And the robot drives back forth, back forth. Uh, so all kind of delivery, up to 10 kilos. 10 kilos is designed uh, uh, payload. Uh, but not only. So just recently there was a case and people say, oh, we want to draw. Is it possible to use it to draw something on the, on the floor? Yes, of course. So the robot is very precise. Check their driving uh, videos. And then, of course, you just install a uh, pen or some, uh, you know, painting device on this. And you control this painting device through either your software or we can even write the application software for you. So it means that uh, not only their waypoints for the robot will be uh, sent to the robot, but also their commands for, their, for this painting device. Yes, we do uh, produce their application software or features uh, based on the customer needs because everyone wants something something special and something unique um, what do we recommend we recommend that you get the robot and start playing with it because uh, we cannot imagine all kind of applications customers always have something even more special so play with it uh, tell us what uh, you are missing and then we, we will quickly introduce those additional features for you. And uh, this way we will uh, make the robot even more suitable for your particular applications. And uh, typically it's very quick, between a couple of days to a couple of weeks, depending on the complexity of the application. Uh, Boxy2, robot, new mobile robot for industrial applications. We very much hope that you will enjoy it. Thank you very much.